It's the Poker News Podcast. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 851st episode of the Poker News Podcast. I am Chad Holloway at Level 9 Studio in Las Vegas with Kinda England and the loose cannon herself, <laughs> Lily Newhouse. Thank you for taking the time for joining us. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. We're going to really get into the Poker Stars big game in a minute, but before we do, we got to talk about the big news that broke in the poker industry, and that is the World Series of Poker has been sold 500 million, half a billion, kind of, yeah. to Gigi Poker, which you've got some familiarity with. Oh, my goodness. Who saw that coming? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a, well, a worst-kept secret type of thing. Like, Gigi has been trying to buy the WSOP for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. I've heard the rumors. I've kind of, you know, seen a little bit behind the curtain, if you will. And there's been moments where, like, this is going to happen. Oh, no, this isn't going to happen. And it's been this roller coaster ride. I had learned this summer. Somebody told me that was very tied into it, like, all right, if this is going to happen, it's going to happen in the next few months. And so and it actually got announced mm -hmm. sooner than I, ha uh, than I thought. So it's $500 million, $250 million cash, and then $250 million will come within the next five years. Um, that was a, a promissory note. Uh, that was according to the press release. Uh, Lily, I mean, you play poker and you're tied into the scene. What was the general consensus, do you think, among the community when this was announced? Um, I mean, yeah, like Hannah said, I don't think people were super surprised, but... Um, I think there was kind of maybe just some question marks of like, what's our future going to look like? And then it was, you know, it was made clear that it's not going to change that much. It'll be maybe more behind the scenes of what they're doing for now and going worldwide and whatever. But, um, you know, I think there were some question marks about what's going to happen online. And um, and then the other reaction that I saw was you know, the haha, -ha, oh, they're going to raise the rake. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I, I think I saw. I, I thought of you too, because do you like Mike play online a lot? Yeah. So it was like, well, what's going to happen with the online client? They just changed it over. But the new online client is a little consistent with how the GG software looks anyway. Right. So it is probably all wrapped in and they are going to figure it out. And I heard talks about like a new client too. Wasn't there the California that they were going to come out with or is that not official yet? I mean, nothing's official well, right official, now. And I'd be surprised if it was California. Because was it California? And what state was it? It was some state. So uh, I'm just pulling things out of my ass. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing. You're right. A lot of people are like wondering, what will this mean? In the short term, I don't think much of anything. Yeah. In fact, as part of the press release, they even said that for the next 20 years, the WSOP will be held at a Caesars property or at least that option is there. Yes. The diamond lines are very important. That was my first thought. <laughs> what about the diamond line? <laughs> well, you'll still be good. I would anticipate it's going to be at the Horseshoe in Paris yeah. for the foreseeable future. I don't see that changing. I don't see a change next year or, or the year after, except for little maybe incremental ones. And by that, I mean this. So Michael Kim is the man behind uh, GG Poker. Mm -hmm. Interesting fact, Michael Kim used to be a Poker News reporter. Really? Yes, this was way before my time, like when Poker News was brand new, 2005, 6, 7, in that range uh, in the Asia Pacific region. Very short stint, but I, I still thought that was pretty cool. And I know him. I went to dinner with him during the WSOP a couple of years ago, and he's a very much a man who's got his fingers on the pulse mm -hmm, of the industry. Mm -hmm. And he also has some forward thinking initiatives, right? He, well, Game of Gold, right? Yeah, I, I, that's how I'm, I met him. He interviewed me for Game of Gold, actually. Like they had him on site and the, I guess the director wasn't there or he wanted to vet people. I don't know. But I was like, they're like, you're meeting with the CEO of GG Poker. I'm like, okay, here we go. <laughs> And uh, so he, Game of Gold is one initiative. Yeah. And, and GG Poker, you see with the online client and the initiatives, they're not afraid to put big guarantees. So he, I do believe, has these grand plans for poker. And now that he has the WSOP, he has a great vehicle to uh, bring these new grand plans. Now, what they might be, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. But I do see him doing a bunch of innovations that maybe the poker world has been screaming for for decades. Because let's face it, Caesars hasn't been the most progressive in – implementing and moving forward poker as a whole. And by that, I mean, right. So like they're not doing uh, new technologies or, yeah. or things like that. Whereas uh, Michael Kim and GG poker are going to do that. I do think it's exciting because I mean, I hate to say it, but I don't think it's a surprise to say that the WSOP brand has sort of been floundering. Um, it seems like to me, at least in the opinion of the poker community, I think there's been a surge um, for the WPT and and stuff with Win, and so it's nice to know that maybe some things will get shaken up. Maybe, like you said, you know, some people will be heard, or um, or we'll see some innovation. 
Right. And uh, you could see GG Poker, they wanted to be in the U.S. market for a long time. Mm -hmm. This might be a good opportunity for them to get in there. Uh, as kind of you mentioned, like the online poker, it yeah. sounds like things are going to stay the same for the states in which they operate, which is Nevada, New Jersey, Michigan. Of course, that's the merge market. And right now, Pennsylvania is a segregated market. Uh, it said, according to the press release, that Caesars Digital will get a license from the new company. So things will stay the same there, at least for the time being, um, it'll be interesting to see, you know, are we going to see more online bracelets? They just announced a new new series. I'm fine with that as long as we they do what we've started to do on this podcast and differentiate li online bracelets with live <laughs> bracelets, right? Mm -hmm. um, the fake slits. <laughs> It's a nice spin up though for Caesars. They paid they paid uh, fifty million for the WSOP back in two thousand four. Harris did. Uh, Caesars was formerly known as Harris uh, from the Binions. I in saw downtown. that 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 price difference is uh, it's impressive. Yeah, ten, ten times their their investment, um, and uh, of course they're still going to benefit from the the having the WSOP at their property. Uh, as we said, it's going to stay at Horseshoe in Paris for the foreseeable future. Um, I don't know. I think it's going to be a lot of, like you said, a lot of behind the scenes stuff at first, mm -hmm. but look for them to ramp things up. I know one, here's a good example. So last year at WSOP Paradise in the Bahamas, uh, you were there, they had this uh, uh, WSOP Plus app. And right. Yeah. That was really convenient too. Like you could wire money to it. You could have it loaded ahead of time because traveling uh, overseas without much cash is, is very difficult. You could win tickets and they would just load them on there for you so that you just go on, you click register. And it was very much like the kiosks, but like without the kiosk, you just had it on your device and you're like, here's my table. Could you just be kind of cash free down there? Yeah. I mean, you wow, could. Yeah. That's nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was just from the registration side of things. They also had features on there where the dealers would get the chip counts at every break. And and then mm -hmm. so you could see them on there. It did have a little bit of a my stack, which Poker News has kind of feature too, where people were getting involved with their own updates, which I think is interesting. And that does stem, I believe, from Michael Kim's background as a live reporter. Like he understands that aspect of it. And look, I love Poker News. We've been doing the live reporting for a long, long time. And we certainly do have different initiatives and, and changes that we do. But it's largely live reporting in poker, not just Poker News, but as a whole has been the same mm -hmm. since it really became a thing back in 2005, six or seven. Yeah. Uh, so I'm interested to see what sort of changes are there there. Who knows? Maybe RFID chips are in store sometime where we have live chip counts every single hand at every single moment. I don't know. One thing I would like to see GG do now that they own the WSOP though is uh, I've been a fan of their online client. When you make a final table, they select the seating by the short stack picks their seat first. We've talked about yeah, this. No way. Yeah. And then the next highest goes and then the chip leader ultimately gets their say of where they sit. Wild. You experienced that on, on Game of Gold, right? Well, barely though, because I was the shortest stack. So I just picked my seat and then everybody got to pick around. But it did benefit the people with the most chips. They got to sit wherever they wanted to sit. And um, yeah, I, um, I ended up to the left of Fedor and I don't think that was a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it would be cool to do, start doing that at the WSOP final tables, right? That'd be wild. Um, yeah. yeah we'll, we'll have to see. But uh, yeah, so WSOP right now is being sold to GG Poker. It is pending regulatory approval. They've still got to jump through all those hoops. I mean, this is a half a billion dollar deal. Uh, so there's going to have to be a lot with the Nevada Gaming Commission or what have you. But as it looks like right now, they're looking to close this out by the end of the year. WSOP Paradise, of course, is coming back to the Atlantis and the Bahamas in December. Uh, so we'll just have to wait and see. But certainly big news. Yeah. Yeah. It's All exciting. Right. Let's talk about something else that's very exciting. <laughs> and that is the Poker Stars Big Game. Uh, we had Nikki Limo in here talking about her episodes, the, her first five episodes uh, that happened. And now we get Lily Newhouse, the new loose cannon. Yes, I think sir. two episodes are out right now. Mm -hmm. I just watched the one this morning, kind of. I think you did too. Yeah, I watched it today. Let's just start with what was it like to be on the PokerStars Big Game? I mean, this was a show that was very popular in 2010 and 11, uh, or, or 9 and 10, 2009, 10, nine, or something like 2009 that. 2009 it was, yeah. I think so, yeah. And then 11 years, it's gone. Yeah. And now it's, now it's back. It was pretty surreal. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm among... A lot of other poker players um, in that the original big game was my favorite show ever um, to watch, you know, poker television. And so, you know, and it had all of the big, you know, the giants, the Doyle and Daniel. And, you know, I think that's where Daniel and his wife even met. And, you know, so it's kind of legendary, that show. Um, and like you said, it's just been gone for a long time, along with, you know, everything that's happened in poker. So um, to to just hear 
that it was coming back was exciting. I got lucky in seeing an article about it coming back. And at the bottom, you know, it said, oh, here's where you go for the free roll. If you win your shootout table, you get an audition. And then 20, I think 20 auditions and they picked two. So it was like, you know, I almost didn't go um, because at first I was like, yeah, I'm going to do it. You know, like I'm going to manifest this. I'm going to get on the show. And um, then I, at the last minute, I almost didn't go. I was like, really, I got to get up at like eight on a Saturday. <laughs> Wait to get in line. My spot. Yeah. That was like the whole thing. <laughs> like I got to drive to the strip at eight on a Saturday. And um, and I said to Jamin, I'm like, it's just like such a tough parlay to pull off. Like get, you know, get a seat in the free roll, win your shootout, get through all the rounds of auditions and get on the show like I don't know. Like, is it even worth going down there? And he was like, well, you can't get on the show if you don't go down to the, you know, to resort. What an excellent point. We can't win if we don't try again. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Right. And you never know when it's going to be your turn. Right. So um, so I did. I went down. And anyway, it was just it was really wild to be in that environment, you know, with these these players that I used to watch on High Sticks Poker and, you know, have watched, you know, Maria and people I've just watched forever, um, Phil Locke, obviously. So it was kind of also just a whirlwind, you know, it was like this. Um, I was actually in the process of applying for a job that same week. So I'm like back and forth, like missing <laughs> calls from this job. <laughs> like I'm like, oh shit, they're, they're not going to hire me. Sorry guys, um, I'm on television today. <laughs> right, I'm on a show. So, you know, going through this series and series of auditions and whatever, and then just like not a lot of sleep, never knowing where you're going next, you know, tons of hours of interviews. So it was a, it was a whirlwind, but it, it was really, really cool. Well, we actually have a little teaser trailer, a little one-minute clip of the big game and what to expect. Check it out. Episode two and the guns are out. Yes. It's inevitable that you give me all your money. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good gods, you did not believe me. I'm just running over the table. Power. You, you weren't checking? I, I apologize. What's the rules? I'm sorry. What? That is one of the weirdest hands I've ever seen. Oh this my is god. The craziest hand in the world. All right, so there you have a little taste of what it's like. You can check these episodes out on YouTube. Uh, two episodes are out right now, and then I think there's what, probably three more coming up? Yeah, coming out every Saturday. There you go. So by the time you're watching this, new episode will be coming out tomorrow. Uh, you got to play. You mentioned like Maria Ho and Phil Locke. You got to play with some other cool people. Sam Grafton was there. Uh, and then there was Dave Krosky, oh who was uh, like <laughs> a loose tank- cannon of his top own. Dave. Was it the tank top guy? <laughs> yes, he's the tank top guy. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> he was a great touch. character, I have to say. I yeah. liked watching him. I enjoyed it. I actually was at a wedding a year or two ago, and he was there. That's oh, when I was no first way. introduced to him. Yeah, he was friends with the groom um, and didn't really play poker much, as you can kind of see on the show, right? Like, this was him very much taking a shot. He's a Vegas businessman, a really nice guy. Yeah. But uh, let's talk, like, well, first off, let's talk about the first episode because there was a really big hand that kind of set the tone early. Yeah. Uh, a bit of a, a cooler situation. Uh, you against Sam Grafton actually have a video of the hand, Ace King versus Jax. Check it out. Lily, a set of jacks for Sam. Lily continues for 800. 3,000. Sam raises to $3,000. Lily calls, heads up to the turn. 10 of clubs. Lily checks to Sam. Sam overbets $9,000. She calls, and we go to the river. And it's a horrible card for Lily. She now has trip aces, but Sam has rivered a full house. She checks. 22,000. He goes nearly full pot. Could be a really short session, guys. I don't feel good about this, but I don't think I can fold. All right. She calls and loses a huge pot. Uh... All right, so there you saw it, like... I felt for you there. Loose cannon. That's a really tough spot. What was it like for you in real time? Was it discouraging? We were like, all right, I'm going to get this back. Um, no, I mean, in real time, right after I lost the hand, I mean, they're giving me $50,000 and 150 hands to film five episodes, and we're on hand number three, and I've lost the majority of it. So in the moment, like, it was, I don't know, like, I got hit by a train, 
Um, this was not how I was planning to start the session. You know, I wasn't planning to come out and play a 70K pot. You know, I, I was hoping to just get the lay of the land and get comfortable and have some banter and mm -hmm. hopefully not get a hand for the first 50 hands, you know? So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I was really like just shook. Um, so, but you know, it was, I had Nadia on the rail and the great thing about having Nadia was she's been through the filming experience of being the loose cannon before. So, um, I went over to her right away and I was, and she was like, do you have any chips left? And I was like, yeah, I have 14 K. Um, and she's like, okay, you know, you've got plenty of big blinds. Like, you know how to do this. Um, you're not out. And I was like, you know, what if this is just a 10 hand session? And then they picked me through all of these, you know, rounds of auditions and everything. And then they just like, don't get a show. Like, obviously, you know, they'll, they'll film a high stakes poker game, but um, so yeah, that was, it was a, a rough moment. <laughs> well, I have to say watching it though, like it didn't feel like that for you. Yeah. Like it didn't feel like you were sweating it or you were worried. You definitely look like you were just enjoying your time there. Like, yeah. I mean, you bounce back pretty quickly. Yeah. So it, you know, I, I, I always feel that too. Like there's a lot of pressure when everybody's watching. Right. Yeah. But it, you didn't, it didn't even look like that at all. I mean, you talking about it now, I'm like, oh man, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> but like <laughs> watching it, it wasn't like that at all at all <laughs> yeah I mean you know it's like th there's something I thought about recently um you know I play uh, like I, I mostly play online and then I play like nightlies and dailies because I don't really have time to play multi-day events a lot yeah you Lily's know? won a lot of the nightlies at the win <laughs> I see her picture on Twitter all the time <laughs> oh, she's yeah. queen of the nightlies yeah, over there that's right um so so I see a lot of you know very small stakes players and how they react to situations and their emotions are all over the place, you know, and they say things to other people or to dealers like it's embarrassing. Right. And so I had this thought recently, but I think it's something I've been trying to do progressively over a number of years of playing is that I'm when I'm at the table, I'm an ambassador for myself, you know, so like everybody you know, I mean, I'm not famous in poker, but people are going to be like, oh, Lily did that. And then, you know, you know what I mean? Like, oh, she threw her cards at the dealer or whatever. Like, so I always just try to be in the same mood, whether I'm winning or losing. And it's, you know, it's just a hand. It's just poker. Like, yeah, was it the biggest pot I've ever lost? Yes. But on the other hand, like, OK, we're in the moment now and I'm not going to let this opportunity pass me by. And I'm also not going to just you know, just get all messed up about it, you know. Yeah, it's a great mindset, I think. You know, stay in the moment, try and be there, be present, and feel the same, even flow. You just yeah. got to speak poker, right? So, like, mm -hmm. I tell people this, I say, like, in poker talk, you bust a tournament, and you're like, good game, good luck. Mm -hmm. But in poker talk, that means... Fuck you. Yeah. Yeah, just fucking yeah, exactly. Nice hand. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm I'm certainly guilty. I, I'm I'm always for that nice hand to have the table, but if you say too much to me, yeah. I might just tell you to go fuck yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and that's fine too. I mean, like that's your brand. It's on brand. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's not my brand. My brand is like, is she as nice as people say she is? And so like mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, it better be. <laughs> I know that uh, Nikki Limo, as we talked about, was the other loose cannon prior, and yeah. you guys are both in Vegas. I think you knew each other before. Uh, has this experience, you know, both being the loose cannon and the same season brought you together? I've seen you guys were both on the Only Friends podcast yeah. uh, just the other day. Yeah. Um, so I knew Nikki through Friends, but I don't actually think I'd ever met her um, before that. But um, my boyfriend, Jamin Burton, knew her, and we had a lot of friends in common. Um, so... It was cool because when we got there, we kind of know of each other and we like what we know of each other, but we've never hung out. And then we're just stuck in these rooms like together um, for hours and hours and hours. So it was a really cool bonding experience, to be honest. Like um, we knew how special it was to have two women have this opportunity and we didn't take that for granted like you know we mentioned on the only friends podcast that when we were auditioning we each thought the other one was our primary competition like i wouldn't did we never thought they would have picked both of us um and in fact when nikki came back she was picked first so they took us down in two final groups and she came back up to the green room and me and there's two other people still waiting to find out who in our group and I just immediately texted Jamie and I was like, I didn't get it. Nikki, Nikki got it, you know. And so to have that experience together was just so, so cool. Really yeah, awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. 
Uh, Jamin, I love him. He wasn't at the Global Poker Awards this uh, past year when he won. He won <laughs> oh Blogger of the Year. You know what? It's funny. You know, I think um, I, I can't speak for him, but he did say, you know, he's been, you know, he's, you know, they don't pick him. Like oh, I've been so many times already. <laughs> and huh? I, I, I had never been, you know, <laughs> yeah. so he said, it's up to you. If you want to go, we can go. And I was like, uh, like a lot of my, you know, friends will be there, like people I don't get to see often unless there's like a, yeah. an event or something. But on the other hand, like I'm not really going to get to talk to them. And mostly I just don't want to dress up. So let's watch it from home Aww, with the dogs. Okay, you know, I was just well, like, okay, like let's just. Next year, hang. next year. You know, we're kind of introverts. So. Yeah, no, I, I feel you. It is a lot. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then so then when when he did win. It was just, it was sort of funny. And he was like, well, like, I guess we kind of stiffed him. <laughs> were you guys watching it on Poker Go? Oh. We were watching it in my office and he was just standing there. And then they, they they announced it. And I was just like, oh, my God. And then I literally filmed him and I put him, I put it on my Instagram story. And I was like, babe, like, you just won. And he's like, yep. <laughs> well, funny thing, too, um, if you are watching this on YouTube, you might get interrupted by a familiar ad. Um, I forget. What, what is it called? Real? Oh, Power Poker? No, it was no. like Real Poker. Or real... What was it called? It's well, an ad that if, he did. If you see the ad, write it in the comments, <laughs> because I watch a lot of YouTube and I see that ad with Jamin about seven times a day. And so, um, yeah, check it out. <laughs> Well, Poker Stars announced that the big game is coming back. The NAPT is going to be back at Resorts World. They're going to film another season. They're going to go through the same process. And they actually released a little video to tease it. Check it out. Here comes the cannon. The games can begin. Oh, High Stakes Poker is alive and well in Las Vegas, ladies and gentlemen. The loose cannon, I take it. I, I am. That is me, uh, Mrs. Cannon. <laughs> but what are you gonna do? Stand on the X. There you go. Nikuliamo. Hello. I'm assuming this is a joke. <laughs> uh. My name is Lily Newhouse. My water broke at the poker table. Um. <laughs> so yeah, you got three yeses. <laughs> Lily, it's your time. What? <laughs> Nikki, you're on this. <laughs> Woo! This was great, you guys. All right, see you next time. <laughs> All right, so there you have it. The big game is coming back. Uh, any tips for uh, anybody who might be like, hey, I want to try to get on there? Obviously, they got to go win, you know, these free rolls or what have you. But let's say they make it to the audition process. Any tips? Um, well, I think some of the things they're looking for are someone who can handle themselves at a poker table but isn't a pro. Um, so they want to make sure that you're not just going to be drowning, right? Um, they want someone who can talk to a camera because they do a lot of interviews, you know, so um, and then I think they want someone who's got a personality and a presence. Um, so if you got those three things, you know, and you, you might stand you a chance. A good Try yeah. out. Go yeah. for it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can't uh, share what happens. You know, there's still episodes come. So no spoilers. But at the end of episode two, you're taking that 14,000 you mentioned and it spun it up to almost 33,000. So only down 17K. Yeah. Um, not too bad. Right. Like so knocking on uh, Bean Busto and spinning it up a little bit. Digging yeah. out. Digging I was out. feeling really good about that was just, you know, because I thought the trajectory could easily be just 14K and then I lose another pot. I'm out, you know, um, and I did go all in a couple hands later. I flopped two pair with King 10 and I jammed um, and he folded. But you know what I mean? Like it could have it could have gone that way. Um, so to make it to the end of two episodes and at least sort of within striking range of my starting stack was um, gave me hope. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to see how it plays out. And uh, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Yeah. Speaking of fun, kind of, you got to go to the grand opening of the largest poker room on the Las Vegas Strip right now. The Venetian debuted their new room. Yeah, I did. I went to their meetup game last Thursday. Um, it's a nice room, man. It's You walk in and it doesn't appear to be as big as it is, but it goes back really far. It's got its own bathrooms in there. Um, they've got the coffee and the soda stations back. Uh, the tables are new and big. Um, yeah, tons of tables, tons, tons of tables, tons of space. Um, what else? I mean, the grand opening was great. They were like passing out snacks and stuff. And then they had a celebrity at every table, like rotating. Um, Landon stacked me. But um, <clears throat> yeah, it was a super fun time. And uh, 
you know what? I'm looking forward to going there again. I heard too. I don't know if this is just a rumor, but that they're going to do food delivery from Sushi oh, Samba nice. now. Oh, no way. Yeah. I mean, still from the Grand Lux downstairs yeah. in the Palazzo, but I don't know if that's a rumor or, you know, maybe it's actually happening. That'd and be with pretty $3 sick. $3 an hour comps. Maybe oh, we yeah. Can get it. Yeah. $3. Is it just for this month or? I don't know. I didn't read that. There's an ad. There was something on Twitter that said that. But it, when we talked to her at the table, they said three dollars an hour. So yeah, that's maybe that's wild. Like, uh, making up for getting rid of the voucher things. <laughs> <laughs> well, you actually sent me a video when you were there, which we want to throw in the podcast. I'm going to run it back to back with some little interviews that John Sofin, my colleague, he was there for the grand opening, did with the likes of Joey Ingram, Maria Konnikova, uh, Scott Bloomstein, and John Friedberg. Check these out. Okay, checking out the new Venetian poker room. Super nice setup over here. Here's my fun table. Who's that? Does anybody know? I'm not sure. Thanks everybody for playing. We're having a fun time already. Here's the scene back here. It's very, very big. And uh, we're having a blast. Here we go. Come check it out. Brand new poker room, Venetian poker room. What are your initial thoughts? Initial thoughts are I'm excited that people are excited. A lot of people are here. They're all fired up. The space is great. Um, the energy is great. I'm excited to see what they do over the next year. I mean, it's hard to argue that it gets any better than this. What do you think about... We're, we're kind of in a different location. Yeah. Not in the, we're not in a casino next to a bunch of slot machines. We're in the middle of the shops. What do you, what do you like think about the location? It's so much better. I mean, I'm so sensitive to smoke. So I love that, like, this is in its own little area. Oh, like, you know, I, mean, I don't think it needs to be near the casino. But if you lose a big hand, you can just go jump in the water uh, by the gondola. So. <laughs> we, don't, we do not encourage that. We don't encourage that. All right, so there you see it. A lot of people having fun, kind of, of course, with the wine. You know, <laughs> always. What are you know, expecting? Always. Uh, there was also a ceremonial first hand, right? It's a brand new poker room. <laughs> oh. You got to have that first hand. Uh, this one had, uh, I'm going to read off the lineup here, Patrick Nichols, who is the president and CEO of the Venetian Resort. So the big dog was in the house. Uh, Rob Brimmer, who is the CFO of the Venetian. You had magician Shin Lim, mm -hmm. who is you know, on the billboards all around town here. Uh, and he has the show in the plot. So theater, which is close to, uh, or he's going to in October rather, which is close to the poker room. Rapper Nelly. Yeah, I, it's getting I, hot was in here. So I was so upset about that too, because I guess he either like left, he had left by the time that I got there or I didn't know that Nelly was there, but man, that would have changed the vibe there so hard. <laughs> I would have been searching out for Nelly for sure. And then there were some uh, big name poker pros, uh, pros, 2017 World Series of Poker main event winner, Scott Bloomstein and Matt Berkey, Farrah Gelfon, Joey Ingram and Jamie Kerstetter. Here's a look at the very first hand dealt in the new Venetian poker room. Jack, no, 
Chop it up, chop it up. Chop, chop it up. Chop, chop it up. Seven on the swing, eight, nine, ten, Jack Queen. Let's go. Joey and Scott. So there you have it. Uh, What's up with Jamie? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was an interesting hand, right? Like, I, I think I think everybody's intention was to play the first ever hand dealt <laughs> in the new poker room. But Jamie Kerstetter just goes ahead, mucks her cards right under the gun, doesn't get to be a part of it. But she can say now that she's the first person to ever fold in the Venetian <laughs> poker room. You so. know what's funny is that actually my note on Jamie Kerstetter on WSOP says... Jamie Kerstetter doesn't like to fold. <laughs> you better change that now. <laughs> Folds firsthand. Professional folder. <laughs> what a knit, Jamie. What a knit. Uh, the Venetian Poker Room, 50 tables spread across 14,000 square feet. As I said, the largest on the strip right now. Crazy. Um, and Jamie is going to be back. Uh, as Actually, as this show comes out, because we release on Fridays, she's going to be hosting a meetup game mm -hmm. at the Venetian, a ladies meetup game. Are you both going to be there? Yeah, definitely. I'm going to be there. I think it starts around one. So if it's later than that on Friday, get over there now and go to the Venetian. <laughs> um, you can call in too and put your name on the list. There'll be lots of ladies. There'll be prizes. Um, so come check it out. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to be there. You're going to be there? Yeah, yeah. I uh, I work till 1.30, so I'll be like fashionably late. Um, but yeah, it's always fun to see all the girls yeah. and support. And it's just Jamie always throws the best meetup games. So yeah, I'm I think pumped. it's going to be a common thing at the Venetian too. It's seems like they're putting in some effort to have more presence and just create more of a fun atmosphere for their patrons. Yeah, awesome. I'm going to check it out for the very first time as well, do some content about the meetup game, and then hopefully find a game that I can jump into because <laughs> I, I want to play in this new room. Come play with the ladies! That's right. <laughs> well, let's shift our focus to California. The Run Good Poker Series was at Thunder Valley. This is where we talked about it last week. Alan Kessler winning 1.2 million jackpot, oh my God, right? That's wild. It had to happen eventually. He's been grinding it out his whole life. And, you know, he messaged me, by the way, kind of. We aren't supposed to talk about that. Oh, sorry. Alan is a complete degenerate, and he just goes and he gambles all of his money away at the casino. <laughs> He's going to message me. He messaged me about last week's episode. Hey, saying Alan. He took offense to, uh, I don't know if it was you or Mike or one of you <laughs> referred to vultures or something. And he, he It was definitely you. Oh, it was, was it me? you, no, yes. I was, I'm, I'm going to say one of you guys. <laughs> It was me, I suppose. But I told him, like, I wasn't calling you that, man. Like, there are literally, like, people who yeah, are vultures all sure. around these Las Vegas yeah, places. So. That, sure. I, I knew what you were saying, too. Like, I mean, there's some people, not Alan, but, like, I see, like, TikTok shorts of people that are showing, like, casino scams. And I think of them as, like, casino cockroaches, you know? Ugh. Like, people that are just going around, like, doing one-push plays or, like, stealing the change out of machines. Those are different kind of people. Like, That's And then there's Alan, people that yeah. wait around and sit and lurk, you know? There's a lot of different kinds of casino goers. <laughs> yes, <it's> true. <laughs> we aren't making fun of you, Alan. We love you. Yeah, good well, job, Well, the Destination Run Good season finale was at Thunder Valley, one mm -hmm. of my favorite properties. They had a $2,500 buy-in, $1 million guaranteed main event, 455 entrants, so just barely squeaked by that uh, that guarantee. Wow, and, really? Yeah. I thought they would kill it for sure. I mean, 2500 That's because I a, didn't go. Yeah, it's uh, a big one. Yeah, it's a bigger, <laughs> bigger price point. Yeah. <laughs> it ended up, this. so this final table was super stacked. Mm -hmm. Josh Prager, who is a legend up in Northern yeah, California. Josh. Uh, Taylor Black, Tyler Patterson, who's like the all-time money leader at... Uh, Thunder Valley, Valley and wow. always crushing it there. Darren Rabinowitz, who took a break from Vegas to go up there. He ended up finishing in fifth. Jared Jaffe. And then it ended up in a three-way deal. Mm -hmm. At the time, Terrence Reed, TJ Reed, he was the chip leader, got $192,000. Lee Mark Holt in second for 124 k and Stephen Ritchie, 110 k for third. TJ Reed is a poker reporter. Yeah, He's yeah. Uh, the footsteps. He used to work for Poker News. Now he works for Poker.org, and he... Uh, you know, like uh, he's been crushing it. He's been playing on live streams. He, uh, you know, does well, whatever he plays. And here he kind of gets this big signature win. I don't, I always mm -hmm. love it when and it, against this table, nonetheless. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm super pumped for him. He's just seems like um, from everything I've seen from him, one of the good guys, you know. And so it's always nice to see when someone who's been, you know, putting in their time or in the industry or, you know, just has been good for poker um, gets a score like that. And it also says a lot about how good he is, you know, or has gotten, you know, at, at poker. Now, yeah. the, now the question is, does he go back to work? I mean, $192,000, <laughs> is he going to go back to poker media? I got that question a lot when I won yeah. the race in 2013, that he's still going to work the World Series of Poker. And it's like, yeah, and I'm sure yeah, he's going to yeah. continue on to like, sure. like $192,000, huge score. I'd love to have that score, but it's not like, 
It's not retirement. Yeah, you don't yeah. quit your job and retire money. <laughs> yeah, it's just maybe you can throw a few in not here and there, you know? You get yeah. to play a little bit more. That's what he said. It's, it's, it's going to his bankroll, and yeah. uh, he's got a hot plans for a hot tub in his home in Northern California. Well, that's great. That sounds nice. So that will go in uh, a little sooner than expected. Congratulations, so. <laughs> TJ. Yeah, and congrats. We're not even going to talk about the fact that you chopped, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, he so, said he only took 10K off, though, yeah, right? Yeah, only 10K ah. off. He was a huge chip leader at the time, and he's, he's addressed it in the winner's interview. Why, why did you even chop? And he's ah. like, you know, only to shave 10K and avoid the possibility of, you know, anything can happen. Right, to take anything a win. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I like, I mean, I was not being, you know, I was not being rude. I was just being funny. But we talk a lot no, about shots here. We do. So yeah. this is an instance. I don't ever, but, um, but good job, TJ. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another big tournament on the other end of the country is happening at the Maryland State Poker Championship. Now, this is a uh, Poker Stars event sponsored by Poker Stars at the Live Casino in, Ma- uh, in Hotel Maryland. Uh, it was a $600 kickoff event, and it got 892 runners. And Nick Cockman out of the U.S. won it for 77000 uh, almost 78000 And I believe he gets a one of these passes to go, like uh, the, mm-hmm. the pass to the NAPT. Oh, really? Uh, I'm not sure if he got one or not. I know another guy did that I'll mention in a, in a minute, so I guess I probably should have read that. But, you know, turning $600 into $78,000, not too bad. That's yeah, nice. for real. It's awesome. In Maryland, of all places. Exactly. <laughs> Why uh, did you say it, like, out of the U.S.? Like, wh- where I don't know. Go- like, I'm used to reading these, like, <laughs> from the WSOP all summer, like reading the country right. where they're from. Why don't you be like out of Maryland or out <laughs> of New York? We, Maybe it didn't where say. Yeah, from? we don't have the state written there. Like that's a, yeah, then that's my bed. <laughs> nice call out, kind of. <laughs> uh, so keep Chad on his toes, you know. <laughs> the, this event had five online qualifiers, you know, who won their way in from Poker Stars US somewhere, um, and they were in a running for a last longer for a gold pass. So that's mm-hmm. what they're calling it, the NAPT Las Vegas main event. They have these gold passes. There's many ways to win them. In this particular event, it's a last longer. So five qualifiers ended up being won by, make sure I get this right, it was Daniel Bellis. Yeah, Bellis uh, ended up coming up. Out of the U.S.? Out of the U.S. (laughs) And uh, outlasted Michael Lavin, who finished in 18th place. Uh, And so he gets the gold pass. And this is like a cool little package. Like it pays for this Mm $5,000 main event at the NAPT, hotel expenses. You know, Poker Stars is going to give them the bells and whistles. You know, you experienced it. Yeah, actually, uh, we, you know, the everyone who won their shootout, they didn't advertise it ahead of time, but everyone who won their shootout for the big game and got an audition, got a seat into the the main event. Yeah, yeah. they definitely didn't advertise that ahead of time to no, keep like certain purpose. to keep certain yeah. people out of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. but yeah, so no, I mean, and then they're gonna do another big game. So yeah, that'll be yeah. cool. And this isn't going to be the only opportunity to win a gold pass. So right now it's the Maryland State Poker Championship, but you have the Pennsylvania State mm-hmm. Poker Championship. This is going to be very similar in nature. It's going to take place August 21st through September 8th at the Live Casino and Hotel in Philadelphia. Over $1.1 million in guarantees, $2,200 main event buy-in, five hundred k guarantee. Uh, and they are also going to give away some of these gold passes, mm-hmm. I'm sure, in similar fashion. Lots of other side events. Poker News will be there to uh, capture all the action, do the live updates. Of course, you can win your way into the NAPT through the Poker Stars client in whatever U.S. state you're in. Poker Stars, of course, the sponsor of this very episode. Uh, I'm going to be there at the NAPT. I'm sure you both will. This is Vegas. You got to defend your ladies' uh, NAPT championship right. title. Yeah, that was a really fun tournament. I'm definitely going to play that again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we can't wait. We'll have to turn our attention to the NAPT when we get a little closer to there. It's going to be in November. But I want to talk Texas poker real quick. There was an interesting article on Poker News written by my colleague John Sofin. The title, This Texas Poker Room is Banking on a Women First Concept. He was talking about the Royal Card Club in Austin. Uh, this is run, helped uh, by Lisa Pickle, mm-hmm. who works uh, for the VP of Operations and Business Development at the club, you might know her from Poker Power. Um, yeah, she's awesome. She's always been such an advocate for women in poker. I like her a lot. Yeah, and I don't know. I like this idea of having a room and not just like having one event that caters to women, but asking yourself, okay, as a room, what can we do to market and to pull in, right? And she's going up against, and she knows that she's not competing with Doug Polk at the lodge, yeah. right, in Austin. Like, it's not going to happen. This is a right. smaller room. So I really like this idea of like, all right, let them do their thing and let's go after this segment 
that we can appeal to. And we've all, we're always asking ourselves in poker, how can we grow women in poker? And I, I don't know. I just really like this initiative. What do you two think? Yeah, it's nice to have a, a, a poker room actually like advocate for that and dedicate space to that. Um, so, yeah, I wish them the best of luck. Hopefully get down there sometime and get to play. Yeah, for sure. I think it's nice. I mean, there's no one serving that niche specifically. I mean, there's tours, you know, but there's no poker rooms, um, you know, focusing on women. And Lisa is definitely the one to do it. So I, I think it's cool. I'm excited to see how they do. Yeah, I'll have to keep an eye on it. That's one of those things like, OK, we know rooms like what appeals, right? So Venetian, we just talked about her and they got their soda machine or what have you. And generally, poker rooms are very cookie cutter in mm -hmm. a lot of ways, I think. Yeah, some have better amenities and, and things like that, charging stations or whatnot. But like, if you ask yourself, all right, if we're going to design a room or at least to ha try to have a room that caters to women, is there anything that can be done different? I don't know the like answer. Maybe some pedicure stations. Mimosas and know? pajamas. Yeah. Yeah. Seems no, like I'm we got kidding. some good ideas. I am not the... Uh you know, I, I have a bone to pick with pajama party tournaments. Okay, not, not everything has to be themed, but uh, <laughs> but no, I think that I think that would be cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll have to check it out, and likewise, if I get down to Texas, we'll definitely have to check it out. I want to give a little teaser. My colleague Connor Richards, of course, does the Life Outside Poker podcast, you and mean he, Connor England, Connor England, yeah. <laughs> my husband. <laughs> well, you have to make it official, maybe on air. <laughs> uh, he did an interview with uh, really is a huge. Brazilian vlogger, right? So this guy has a huge audience in South America. His name is Romulo Doria. He goes by Poker Profit, and he was at the World Series of Poker this summer, and Connor got him for the Life Outside Poker podcast. I just want to give a little taste, a little minute clip or so about what that interview was like. Check it out. I, I kept studying. I kept trying to... This scholarship I got here, I came to study economics. I learned English in, the, in that point. So it was really good for me I was really realistic that there was there was like I started wanting to live from poker when I got in the US and I saw how much I could make an hour which I had 20 years old 21 so I think it was four years that I kept playing poker kept improving because I loved the game so I, I was doing not only for the money but because I was playing a game I love and I was also making money but I only called myself a professional poker player maybe when I was 22 and I started making enough money to say, okay, now I'm making money enough that actually makes sense to say I focus in this in this game, you know. And happy enough, uh, after I decided to do that, things started happening really fast. Uh, when I started vlogging, for example, I started in Portuguese and in English, and the one in English performed way better. So I said, okay, I'm gonna do vlogging in English, and we grew fast. But there was a plateau that I reached at some point and I, I, I always thought I always did my best in my content I, I, I really try to generate the most value I can to the consumer and I was thinking why am I reaching this plateau why am I reaching this plateau so I decided to make one video in Portuguese and this video alone had more views than I ever had in English. All right, so there you have it. If you want to check out the full interview with Connor Richards, Life Outside Poker with Romulo Doria, a.k.a. the Poker Prophet out of Brazil, go to the Poker News YouTube channel. I will also link to it in the show notes. So I just got back yesterday as we're recording this, and I mentioned it on last week's show. I got to go across the country to upstate New York and competed in a little thing called Survival Challenge. Uh, I'm sorry, Survival Challenge is what I competed in 2022. I competed in Survivor Angelica, the theme Medieval Mayhem. Ooh. So it was <laughs> a live reality game in LRG. For those who don't know, it's basically like a mini version of the game Survivor, which you see on TV. Uh, you go out, you challenge yourself, you're in tribes, you vote people out. It's it's Survivor just on a miniature scale. It's a lot of fun. It's only the second one I've ever done. I can't share exactly how I did uh, because there are going to be episodes on YouTube later this year. But uh, I don't know. Th these things are addicting to me. So is this like, okay, I have to admit I've never watched Survivor because I'm terrified of snakes. And so I can't watch it. But is this sort of like like alone like are you like building your own house or what's going on there? so each one is a little bit different okay. yes there was one when i played uh, survival challenge in 2022 we literally like got a tarp and then you have to hang it and build mm -hmm. a little camp and, and things like this uh survivor angelic was a little different they had cabins mm -hmm. but these cabins were literally like just nothing there's nothing no beds in them. or anything yeah, it's just they, inside basically they actually yeah they did have uh some like little uh, very primitive bunk beds, like okay. nothing, no, no sheets or nothing, just like 
you know, the bare, the bare, bare, bare bones. So uh, this one was a little more luxurious than yeah, others, right. if and you And what will. was the medieval, like, how did that play in? So they like to have themes. And in this particular one, there were two tribes, you know, based on like these old knights, if you will. And then they had this marketplace and you can earn shillings throughout the game. And you go to the marketplace and you spend them on different oh, things or cool. what have you. Then all the challenges were themed a little bit towards medieval times, right? Like uh, some archery. Type of thing, and, and so is this kind words. of for video game nerds? It can be. It can I, be. I could see. I could see the trajectory where you're yeah. like, you know, like that sounds like for people like my son who are super into video games. That sounds like the ultimate goal is like you're in like a real you're game. In yeah, a video you get to game. like buy the stuff at the marketplace. That sounds. That sounds pretty cool. Actually, it, it was <laughs> a lot of fun. And I, barter. I got to play <laughs> yeah. with some really cool people from all around the country, even uh, some from Canada. Uh, these were hardcore gamers, right? That's like, cool. When we think gamers, we think poker all the time. Yeah. Like, yeah. There are yeah. people out there who have, uh, you know, board games and, and things like that, deductive reasoning strategy. or what have you, strategy yeah. games, right? And they brought it. They were a tough crew. I really enjoyed meeting them. The people who host this also, I got to give a shout out to them. Uh, Jason Cernis is the guy who kind of is the, the head of it, but he's got this whole crew, a couple dozen people. They take literally take time out of their lives, for, away from their family, away from their work, their vacation time to come just host this so that people like myself can get this experience. So very grateful for them. Um, it was so much fun. I can't wait to share videos. I'll probably show some clips once the episodes come out. Um, you can check out past episodes on the Survivor Angelica YouTube channel. And if anybody's interested, if you're listening to this, you're like, okay, what are these LRGs about? Reach out to me. I will be happy to introduce you because they are so much fun. They're so addicting. I want to get Kaina and Mike on one of these things. <laughs> yeah, oh, right. Yeah. I would just like ask to Bring be voted wine. out for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd be I like, would too. Can I can I use my shillings to buy alcohol at the, the market <laughs> get here? A ticket home. <laughs> we did buy a bottle of wine. <laughs> oh right. Ten yeah. shillings. It, it cost ten shillings. Get so. some money. <laughs> uh, I'd like to see you and Mike on the Amazing Race. How about you know, that? I've you been go. for years with my best friend talking about going on the Amazing Race because she's like a mom of four and I'm like a poker player and we're just so completely different but we get along so well and we've talked even about like who's going to do what challenge and I actually asked Maria Ho too I was like hey can you like set this up somehow and she's like oh yeah make your video and let me know but we just never get around to making a video you know she's got four kids maybe this will be the year though I don't know it's been a dream of ours I feel like you have like your very larger than life personality that comes through well on screen. So I feel like you're like a shoe in for auditions for a lot of these kind of reality shows. Well, like thank you. Yeah, I just we have to somehow. Well, she lives in Chicago. I live yeah. out here in Vegas. Is we've just never really gotten around to filming this video that we have to film to audition. And she's got a big personality too. And we just we're we just get along so great. It would be it would be so much fun. Although I you know I can't see myself running around in other countries. I probably would stroll. You know, take a taxi. <laughs> Let's stop and get a drink. But I would you know I would try my best. Yeah, why not? Lily, what about you and Jamin? You guys, uh, amazing <laughs> oh, race. Oh God, um, we're not the biggest travelers. Um, I'm kind of the type of person, and Jamin is too, where it's like. Let's make our home so nice that we never want to leave. Um, so I think maybe we could just do maybe just the board games at home. Would be fine. <laughs> Wine and board games. Would I like be it. Cool. I like but that I'm solution. <laughs> we'll watch you do the amazing race on yeah. TV. Oh, we drink wine at home. Yeah, I'll be sitting with my feet up. <laughs> I love it. Well, that is going to do it for this episode of the Poker News Podcast. Lily, thanks again for taking the yeah. time. Yeah. And Thank I can't wait to me. see how the uh, the big game goes for you. For sure. Yeah. Keep keep an eye out. It'll be it'll be a fun ride. Ooh, spicy. Awesome. <laughs> and open invitation to Jamin if he ever wants to, you know, fill in and come on the show too. I'll let him know. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, that is going to do it. We will be back every Friday at 8 a.m. Pacific time with a new episode. Mike might be back. I think he's in the Bahamas right now. Mike's on vacation. That's why I wore this shirt. Like, I'm jealous, Mike. I wore my uh, little Bahamas shirt here for you. So, Uh, but he should be back. Kaina will be back, I think, too. And uh, we'll have to see what breaks in the stories. Until then, we'll keep a seat open for you. 